Welcome to the garage. I'm Robert, and this is House of Psychoworks. Today, we're not going to be wrenching, cutting, welding, grinding, powder coating, or anything like that. Today is actually a math lesson. Now, don't run off. This isn't going to be like grade school math class. It's going to be real simple. Um, we're going to rely on the power of the internet to do our calculations for us. All you need to do is figure out a couple of numbers and then we're going to input those into a calculator online to figure out what our speed is on our mini bike and or our RPM to hit said speed. So to start, get yourself a piece of paper. Now what we need to do, the first number we need to know, and I'll throw a graphic up on the screen, say about there, we need to know the number of teeth on whether it's a clutch or torque converter, the drive sprocket. So the small sprocket that the chain is attached to. And we'll use our mini bike project as an example. Ours has a 12 tooth sprocket on our torque converter. Now the next one that we need to figure out is the number of teeth on the sprocket attached to the wheel. Um, that's usually printed or stamped or it's usually somewhere on the sprocket. On our mini bike project in particular, um, I believe I said 53 teeth in a previous video. Um, I was incorrect. It is actually 57. So there's 57 teeth on that drive sprocket. All right, still with me so far? Math isn't, hasn't come into play yet. All we had to do was count. Um, like I told you, this. We're not going to do this the hard way. <clears throat> All right, the next number we need to know is the diameter of the driven wheel. So in this case, we have a 145, 70, 6. That's a 6 inch rim. It's 145 millimeters wide, 70% of 145 is the height. If anyone has ever wanted to know what those numbers mean on a tire, there you go. It's your width. 70% of the width is the sidewall height and then the size of the rim. There, there are calculators online that you can use to put these numbers in and it will tell you the actual diameter of the wheel, but most of those are for cars. Um, the issue with that is, I'll draw this out, hopefully you can see it. Most car tires are shaped like this. They round the shoulder a little bit, but you have a large flat contact patch. That's fine. Um, that's what you want on a car. On motorcycles and mini bikes, the wheel actually is more of a balloon shape. So there's a small contact patch. The car tire calculator when it gives you the diameter, we'll measure from here all the way across the tire. It will not take an effect. This ballooned. I'm not very good at spelling, so that may be wrong. It will not take an effect. This ballooned area here. Best way to figure out the diameter of your wheel is to use a tape measure and measure from the ground while the tire is inflated to the proper PSI and the bike is straight up and down, vertical position, measure from the ground to the top of the tire. That is going to be your tire diameter. That's the number we're looking for. Um, with the PSI that we're sitting at with this particular size tire on a six inch rim on our mini bike, we are 14 and a half inches and you want that in inches. Um, that's all the math that we need to figure out. 
Um, I do not have a tachometer on this bike, so our RPM is a question mark. Now, most of us have smartphones or some sort of tablet. That can be your speedometer. Um, in a previous video, you saw that we hit 34 miles an hour. Okay. But we don't have a tack, so we don't know what RPM we're spinning at. Um, and the issue with some of these Predator motors is that they are governed, and so is our project mini bike. Um, but they're not consistent and seldom are they the same from motor to motor. It can be anywhere from 3,000 RPM to 4,000 RPM. That's the number we're trying to figure out. What is our motor spinning at in order to get us to this speed? We don't want to be revving it out too far. We don't have a billet rod. We don't have a billet flywheel. We don't want that coming apart. So we want we don't want to go anything over 5,000 RPM on the factory flywheel or connecting rod. It's a huge safety concern on these import clone motors. They're not they're just not built for that sustained RPM. So we know everything we need to know to now jump online and then put this into our calculator. And we're gonna have a, do some educated guessing here. Um, when we put these three variables in the calculator, it's gonna wanna know what our RPM is. We do have it narrowed down to between three and 4,000 RPM. So we're gonna put 3,000 in and see how far away from 34 miles an hour we are. And we'll slowly walk it up until we hit 34. And that'll give us an accurate RPM. Now we're at our PC and we are on our online calculator. I will put a link to this webpage for the calculator in the description. Um, pretty simple. Inches in diameter is going to be the diameter of our drive tire, which in our case is 14 and a half inches. Um, we're not sure about the engine RPM, that's what we're trying to figure out. So we're going to start at the low end. Um, the Predator 212 seem to be governed anywhere between three and 4,000 RPM. So we're starting at the bottom, set it to 3,000. Number of teeth on the axle, in our case, is 57. Teeth on the clutch is 12. And we're gonna hit convert and see what our miles per hour are, 27. So that's a little low. Let's adjust our RPM. And remember, the RPM is the variable that we're trying to solve for here. Uh, raised it by 500, 3,500 RPM. Hit convert, 32 miles an hour. We're getting close. Um, let's try 3,600 RPM. Not changing anything other than engine RPM. 33. Let's change it ever so slightly from 3600 to 3650. Um, must have been a decimal increase. Let's try 3700. 34 miles an hour. So with our particular setup, in order to consistently hit 34 miles an hour with a 12 tooth sprocket on the clutch, a 57 tooth sprocket on the axle, a diameter of our drive wheel at 14 and a half inches. We have to be hitting 3700 RPM in order to hit our 34 mile an hour goal. Pretty simple. Um, so you can input on this calculator whatever your s sprocket sizes are and wheel diameter and either see what your engine RPM is at a given mile per hour if you know that 
or if you know what your engine RPM is, or you can even guess to see what your miles per hour are going to be. So hopefully this video hasn't been too boring for you guys. Um, it is math, I know, it sucks, but it's good to know, um, especially if you're building a mini bike or a go-kart or something for a younger individual. When you get all your parts together and you've got it assembled, you want to know that what you just built isn't going to be too fast for the rider. If you're building it for a small kid, you don't want anything over 15 miles an hour, uh, especially if this is their first go-kart or mini bike or whatever. Um, and you can change. You're not stuck at that mile per hour number. Um, you can remove the governor, which unless you put in a billet rod and billet flywheel, I wouldn't do. Um, you can adjust the governor, and there's some tutorials online on how to do that um, for the Predator motors. You can change your drive sprocket tooth count, and the easiest one to change is the driven sprocket tooth count. The smaller the sprocket, the faster the top speed. The larger the sprocket, the quicker the acceleration, lower the top speed. Um, one way to get around some of that, though, is if you have a small sprocket, but you still want crazy acceleration, like we have a small, what's considered a smaller sprocket on our mini bike project, but it still accelerates out of the hole fast enough to pull the front wheel off the ground. That's because of the torque converter. So if you want the best of both worlds, um, good top speed and almost brutal acceleration, run a torque converter. Now, when you start going one extreme, or the other on your driven sprocket you have to make sure that you've got the power to spin that if you have a two horsepower motor and a say a 10 tooth drive sprocket and a 53 tooth driven sprocket you're never going to realize that top speed it just doesn't have the grunt to spin that there's something you can do about it yeah you header intake you, you can build the motor out um, but there is a fine line and it is a balancing act. Same is true if you have a large sprocket on the driven wheel. If you don't have the power to accelerate that RPM, you know, from zero to whatever you're governed at quickly, it's going to be a slug. It, it's, it'll never get to its top speed. It may bog and stall. Um, so just be careful. Now on the calculator that we used, down in the smaller print, they do have a suggested gear ratio, which is the gear ratio is determined between the driven sprocket and the drive sprocket tooth count. There's a good roundabout number that you want to be at. I believe it was 5 to 1, somewhere in there. So just read through that and it'll tell you. And uh, if you see someone else's project, you know, at, don't be afraid to ask them what they're they're running for tooth counts for their sprockets and whatnot. You can always run this calculator before you even purchase any of your parts to see what you actually want to get in order to reach the speed that you're looking for. Hopefully that shed some light on that for you guys and kind of cleared some things up and made sense. But until next time, get up, get out there, and do it.